watch this. He says, go out a little deep. You got to get in deep water to really catch souls, saints. You can't be a shallow Christian. You can't be on the edges, you know, uh, leave a track somewhere, walk by and say, praise the Lord. Or think somebody's really watching you when you pray at a restaurant. You can't even go to a restaurant now, so how can they see your prayer life? And so you're praying, oh, Jesus, you know, bless my food. Uh, you better have that prayer going on in the morning when you get up. And you better be praying before you get to the restaurant. And, and, and so in that process, look at it. It says, and lower your nets. What did he say? He said, lower your nets. Let's see if we can catch some fish. No, no. Look what it says. Lower your nets for a haul. Uh, listen, I fish all over the world. When somebody tells me, Bart, put your line in because there's fish here. We catch a fish called a dolphin. You call it mahima. Very colorful fish. They get really big, nice, beautiful, fast, about 40-some miles an hour, 40, 50 miles an hour. They swim. And we'll catch little ones about this big. They're good eating. And we'll get one. Instead of putting it in the boat, we leave it in the water about two, three, four feet underwater. And it's swimming like this. Next thing you know, the whole bottom lights up. And fish come up by the hundreds. I have caught in one hour 200, 300 of these dolphins just constantly putting them in the boat. Blood everywhere. Guts everywhere. Just Filling the boat with them because they are aware it's a haul. We went fishing and we got a haul. Come on, you get that? And, and I'm not talking about some bamboo pole and you standing on the side of some lake with your mud shining through your toes and you're there trying to catch that same fish, uh, Bubba, that you've been trying to catch and you ain't caught him for years. Uh, I'm talking about a haul. Were you with me? And Simon Peter answered, Master, here, here's a Christian. We've toiled all night. In other words, he said, we've worked all night. We're tired, exhaustedly, and caught nothing in our nets. And Jesus could have said, well, that's why you had to get them up and clean them, because you couldn't catch any fish. But on the grounds of your word, now this guy Peter, he's got it right. On your word, I'm going to do this. I'll lower my nets again. Again, even though I didn't catch it, he probably said to the other guys, look, just humor this guy. Put the thing in the, well, the Bible says, look what it says. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish as their nets were at the point of breaking. And they signaled to their partners in the other boats, uh, that's James and John, to come uh, and take hold of them. And they came and filled both the boats. So they began to sink. Then it says when Jesus, when Peter, uh, Simon Peter saw this, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Uh, and for he was gripped with bewildering amazement, aligned uh, uh, to terror. And all who were with him at the hall of the fish, they were all made to just be in absolute awe. James, John, the sons of Zebedee, they came and they said, my God, We've never seen anything like it. Jesus is showing us a principle, saints. We're coming out of captivity, but we're coming out of captivity with a people who have been under fear, under all kinds of drought. Come on, drought of money, drought of food, uh, drought of toilet paper, whatever. They've been a drought going on, and these people are going to witness God's people coming out blessed. We're coming out of Egypt with all the gold and silver. We're coming out blessed. And when we come out blessed, they're going to say, how is it that you seem to be catching fish when nobody else is? We did what he said. We cleaned our nets, and we put them where he told us to put them, and God blessed our boat. Look at this now. Here's another one. Cleaning your nets is where we are right now because that's a harvest coming. Go to Matthew chapter 4. Go to Matthew chapter 4. I, I'm, I'm closing. Come on, stay with me. Stay with me. Don't get weary. We're a little bit longer today because we did the interviews. But you're all right. You're all right. Rock Church family, you like being in church because I've seen you stay here a long time. And, and, and Matthew chapter 4, verse 21, look at it. And, and it says here, and going on further from there, he noticed two other 
brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets and putting them right. How many of you know Jesus saw the two partners in this together? James and John were partners of Peter. They each had a boat. Jesus sees Peter's boat, and they are mending their nets. And then when you look at these guys, all right, uh, one's washing their nets, I'm sorry, and one's mending their nets, okay? So you need to see that they were mending their nets and they were washing their nets, cleaning their nets. That's what it's talking about. So they were cleaning their nets and they were mending their nets. How do you know when you clean the net, you get all the dead fish? When you mend the nets, you got to put the knots back together. How many of you know God's going to bring the church, uh, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, pastors, and teachers together? In, in, in a short few weeks, I'm calling a meet, meeting in Baltimore City, in Baltimore County, with some pastors because God put in my heart to bring them together so we can tie the knot back together so the bigger net that we fish with over this region can be effective. So they both cleansed the nets and they mended or fixed the nets. And they had to fix them because the fish would get away. Now, each story emphasized two different points of interest. One was washing, of course. One was mending. Both were the purpose of a high harvest of fish. Provision, increase was coming. 1 Corinthians, look at it. Chapter 9, verse 16. I'm going to read a little bit to you. 16 through 23, that's all. Look at it. Paul had a different perspective on things. And Paul's perspective on how he would handle the privilege of his preaching the gospel to the whosoever. And he says there, for if merrily preach the gospel, that uh, if, if I merrily preach the gospel, that give me no reason to boast, for I feel compelled of necessity to do it. Woe is me if I do not preach the glad tidings of the gospel. That means the good news of the gospel. How many you know the gospel is good news? For if I do this work of my own free will, then I have my pay, my reward. That's the guys that go out and just preach so they can get a new message. I'm in a new place to preach. But if it is not of my own will, but is done reluctantly and under compulsion, I still in, am entrusted, uh, hello, with a sacred tr uh, trusteeship and commission. Hallelujah. Come on, Paul's laying it out. And when this is the actual reward that I get. What then is the actual reward that I get? Just this, that in my preaching the good news, the gospel, I may offer it absolutely free of expense to anybody. Come on. Not taking the advantage of my rights and privilege as a preacher of the gospel. Let's go to verse 22, 23. Jump over there. Verse 22. Uh, to the weak, wanting in discernment, have become weak. I have become weak, wanting in discernment, that I might win the weak, and over, uh, and over scrupulous, I have in short become, watch what he says, I have become all things to all men that I might, I might by all means at all cost and in any and every way save some, not all, by winning them to faith in Jesus Christ. Paul said, I become all things to all men. By some means, I might win some of them to Christ. Paul's perspective was how he treated the gospel. He said, I've been privileged to be able to preach the gospel. I'm not charging for the gospel. I preach it. If people respond and they give, that's a different story. That's them sowing into something. But I don't charge. How many of you hear that? I've never charged. Uh, I've preached all over the world. I've never charged. I've never put a demand. I need this amount of money. I need these kind of peanuts or any of that other garbage. I go because God opens a door. I've never once asked somebody to let me preach for them because I don't have to do that. God opens the door. And I've been around the world and I've preached to some of the largest churches and outdoor meetings in the world because I trust my God to supply all of my needs. That's why you got to trust him to supply all of your needs. Amen. And Paul said, look, I, I, I've learned something. i got to be all things to all men. And, and for us to affect the Babylonian culture, follow this now, for us to affect the Babylonian culture and bring in a harvest, that's why the nets, if we're going to affect the Babylonian culture, we're going to have to really do something amazing. We're going to have to learn 
how to become all things to all men. We have tried to, to preach the gospel from a charismatic Pentecostal verbiage. We use terms that turn people off. We choose to use terms that people can't even understand. Somebody says, I'm on fire. Next thing you know, the guy's got a fire extinguisher trying to put you out. I mean, but we use terms the world don't understand. I read a book one time, the guy said, speaking the language of Babylon. And you got to understand, Babylon has a language. I don't have to cuss and swear to bring people to Jesus. I mean, sometimes people cuss all the time. And people that cuss, I did it when I was unsaved, but I want to tell you something. That just shows how dumb you are. That just shows your lack of intelligence when you're cussing all the time. But anyway, we need to understand something. We've got to become all things. If I'm going to win the politician, I've got to get my head around what is the opposite of the politician's mantra or the politician's verbiage or the politician's ideology. I've got to have the ideology of the kingdom. I've got to have a kingdom view of my city, of my world, of my community, of my school, of my life. I need a kingdom perspective and not a worldly perspective. How many of you get that? Now, in this process, Paul wrote more about this kind of a mission he was on. And he says it in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 17 through 20. Look at this. Uh, Paul says something real powerful here, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And uh, therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, uh, if he's engrafted in Christ, uh, the Messiah, he is a new creature, creation. A new creature altogether. The old previous moral uh, spiritual condition has passed away. And behold, a fresh and new perspective of the kingdom has come. How do you know, church people, we need to get a new perspective of why Jesus saved you. Why did Jesus deliver you? Why did God take you out of being a drug addict or being a prostitute or, 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 or alcoholic or, or just crazy or a sinner in whatever way? Why did God do that? He did that so he could empower you and give you a voice so you could speak to the God, little g, of this age and change the culture so that we could be the culture setters. Are you listening today? This message will change your life. And, and if you look at this uh, a little further, but all things that come from God, uh, who through Jesus Christ reconciled. Now that's the key word. That's where I'm ending. Reconciled. He's reconciled us to himself. Received us into favor is what it means. Brought us into harmony with himself. I was an enemy of God as a sinner. I've been reconciled. I've been put back in right relationship with my Father God. And he gave me his favor. And gave us the ministry of reconciliation. What are you saying? I'm saying you and I have been given the ministry of reconciliation that by word and deed we might aim to bring others into harmony with him. You see, my role, my role every day now is who can I share with? Who can I talk with? I'm having so much fun. I'm having a blast. I'm preaching to people. I'm watching people respond and come and ask me. I had a delivery man the other day, ran up. He was handing me the package. I held on to it. <laughs> and, and he had it. And, and I kept it out there. And, and he let go. And I held it out there. And he said, no, it's for you. I said, I know, but hold on to it a minute. He took it back. I was just playing with him. He took it back. He was in a hurry. You know how they get. And I said, Father, bless this man. I can't touch him, but let something flow. He went, hey, that, that was really good. Thank you so much, sir. And he ran off. Saints, saints, this is the time. We got our nets clean. We got our nets mended. We got the right understanding that God's pulling us out of Babylonian doctrine, Babylonian systems, and we're coming out with the message of the kingdom of God, and we're reconcilers. Keep going. And uh, we've been reconciled by word and deed, uh, and go on. It was God personally present in Christ, reconciling, restoring the world to favor. Look what he's doing. He's restoring what? Notice he ain't still restoring the earth, saints. He's restoring the world to favor with himself, the system. 
not counting up and holding against men their trespasses. Jesus is not holding it against them. He wants to forgive them. Reconciling uh, and then committing to us the message of reconciliation of the restoration of favor. Oh, man, people want to know that there's a favor. Go on, roll it again. So we are Christ ambassadors. And um, God making his appeal as it were through us, as uh, we as Christ's personal representatives beg you for his sake to lay hold of the divine favor <laughs> and now offered you and be reconciled to God. Oh, I want to say this. Here's, here's how I'm landing. You, you got to get me today. This, this, is, this is so awesome. There's a movie called The Mission. Years ago, it was a Jesuit missionary sent to reach out isolated tribes of South uh, America. And they, he came to the shore, and these, uh, these native people that were wild and, and, and never been around anything civilized, uh, he had a cross on his neck, this Jesuit priest, and they took the cross, and, and they saw it, and they took him and tied him on a tree that they fixed like a cross. They put him in the water and sent him down the river. And he went over the falls, a massive falls, and it killed him. And his other Jesuit priests were down at the end of the waterfall. And, and they saw his body. They pulled him up. And they buried him quick because uh, they wanted to get him in the ground. And they did their service. They put him in the ground real quick. And the next one up went right up the hill and climbed up. You mean you just got killed for going in there? got to watch the show, saints. The show will break your heart. And how many of you know, your neighbor ain't that hard to reach. You ain't got to climb up some mountain in the Amazon to get your neighbor. You ain't got to do all that. You ain't got to go through all that, saints. This is uh, important to understand this. And, and, and to close this out today, it's so important to get this. You cannot, rec you cannot reconcile what you have not saved. Uh, served. I'm sorry. You cannot reconcile what you have not served. To reconcile is to bring together opposing forces. The very nature of the word reconcile, a reconciliation, denotes personal involvement in a life of commitment. I want to pray with you today. I want you to hear me. You and I are called reconcilers. You and I are called reconcilers. You know, it's important to understand this whole theory here of what we're talking about, this whole presentation of the Babylonian system. The Babylonian system is what's ruling over China, Russia, America, these nations of the world. It is a system that has been proven through time, a system of corruption and idol worship, uh, immoralities uh, and greeds uh, and all of that. And, and, and all of this is going on. And God saved you and I, believers, and he redeemed us so that we could come. And we could be reconcilers, bringing people back to God. My prayer for you is this, is that before the week, uh, this coming week ends, you'll get a hold of somebody. I had a man tell me just yesterday, he said that he got his brother who lives in another state to watch the program. And his brother has been really attentive and his brother's been watching. And his brother got some of his friends to watch the program. And because of that, he's thrilled because he's seeing uh, his own family being reconciled. Somebody told me the other day that they got a job change and they told their children, look at this. This is a story so that you can see how good the Lord is. I'll tell you how good the Lord is if they see what you did with the job. Are you a witness on the job? Are you paying your tithes because of the increase of the job? Whatever good that God brings us, we need to turn it into a principle of living out the kingdom of God. And we need to know that when this day, when this day is done and God calls you home and calls me home, he's going to cause us to ask the question, what have you done for me? What have you done for me? And I thank God for the story of Jesus and talking about the fisherman and how he came along and finds uh, John and James and Peter. And he shows them uh, an illustration of his power by all these fish coming in. Saints, I'm telling you, God wants to make you a net. Will you pray with me today? God wants to make you a net. He wants to clean the net up. He wants to clean it so that you can be part of this end time harvest. You see, we're coming out 
of captivity. But we can't come out and just continue to do things we've always done. It can't be business as usual. It has to be that we come out of the captivity and we come in to a harvest, a revival, a reformation, a restitution of things that God wants to give back to the church. I believe this is the most powerful time. Father, bless your people today as they've listened and they've listened intently. And I pray for them that will have heard and that they've received and there'll be an awakening that happens in their own heart, in their own family, God. And they'll be reconciled back to you. If you're not saved today, will you let Jesus, uh, from my words today, reconcile you, bring you back uh, home, back to the family of God, back to the plan of God. Let God restore you. Let God heal you. Let God, let him, let him put his love over your heart. Let him cover you today with his grace and his mercy. I pray that God will bless you and bless your home and you'll have peace in your home and you'll have blessing and you'll have healing and let no virus come near your house. And I pray that God will keep you, but you will see and that this is the day for a change. We're coming out, saints. We're going to get this thing right. Opportunity is coming out of peril. We're going to get it right and we're going to give birth to new opportunities to share our faith. When we go back to work, you're going to be able to share Jesus kept you. You're going to be able to share Jesus had a plan for you. And you're going to share how you survived, how you kept the faith, how you kept yourself strong. You're going to have the word of the Lord. And harvest will come to you because your net's fixed. You'll be able to catch uh, a massive harvest. Uh, and God's house will be filled. Uh, and the church and the kingdom will grow because you and I have become the citizens of the kingdom and we're confronting the system of Babylon. It will no longer dictate how you live and how I live because God has made us new creatures. In Christ Jesus, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I bless you today. I thank you for listening. I thank you for joining us. If you've given your life to the Lord, call on the phone line. Somebody there wants to encourage you, pray with you. And, and don't forget, give. And most importantly, don't forget love. Tell somebody how much you love them and how much God loves them. God bless you. Thank you for watching Rock City Church Online. We pray this message strengthens and encourages you to be all God has called you to be. You can support Rock City Church by giving online through the links in the description or by visiting our giving page at giver.cc. Join us for our next live stream on Thursdays at 7 p.m. and Sundays at 1030 a.m. And remember, our prayer room and prayer line are always available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. For prayer, call our 24-hour prayer line at 410-882-2689.